All right, we got another uh, all-in-one flight controller here from Speedy B. F405 40 amp all-in-one. And this is a gyro, the ICM 42688P, uh, 3 to 6 S LiPo. I believe the ESCs are Blue Jay ESCs. And a quick look at some of the documentation. It's a quick start guide, QR codes there for the app and user manual. I believe you can use this PDB app to do some quick configuration. Uh, quick specifications overview. Pause the video if you want to take a closer look at this. Wiring diagram. Looks like it's got a heatsink on there. Settings overview. Pretty sure that this is going to be online anyway, so if you can't make out anything, I'm sure it'll be on the product page regardless, and we'll be talking about a lot of these things anyway. Alright, so it looks like we got a soldering practice board. So these are always nice for you beginners. Practice on this first before you mess around with the actual flight controller and uh, get your soldering you know as good as possible this is a nice little addition okay here's what the on one looks like 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters on board USB-C and uh, I do like all of the the, the uh, motor wire pads here they have one on the bottom here and on the top and on the side so definitely Lots of different ways to go there. The uh, silicone grommets are pre-installed. Pretty nice there. And you, again, you have some of these pads are labeled, so uh, there'll be you know, there's the wiring diagram, of course, but then uh, some of these are already labeled. And my camera's having a hard time focusing on these. Yeah, so you can see that they're actually some of them are actually denoted here on the heatsink, which is nice. Uh, not on this side, of course. You have this wireless antenna. That's for the Wi-Fi connection to your app. And so you, if you don't want to use the USB-C port, you can use a SpeedB app to get in there and do some quick tuning. Got your big pads here for your battery connector. And then all of your different connectors here. So it's, uh, they're pretty nicely labeled all around. And I think the DJI plug is this one right here. Yeah, so you have your six pins, so it's like, it's like this, you have your battery voltage ground, uh, T3, R3, it's a UART ground, and SBUS, so this is for your DJI connection. So we have a, a USB-C extender here with that connector there, so you can move the USB-C port somewhere else, and that is what these pads are for, these in D plus, D minus here, that's for the USB port to be moved. And as usual, they've got all of your accessories. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So, got XT30 power cable and connector. These are um, 16 gauge wire, so pretty nice there. 35 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor included. So they have all the cables and they're nicely labeled. You have your six pin DJI air unit cable here. And they have an extension cable as well. And you've got a Type-C extension module. That this is, that's the cable that goes to this, uh, yeah, it goes to this little board here with the uh, USB-C extension. All right, so there's the rest of your hardware. You got your mounting screws there, M2 by 12, and some uh, nylon hex nuts. Uh, more stack mounting screws here. These are a little bit longer, M2 by 20, and some vibration dampening grommets there. M2, yes, M2 by 6.6 millimeter silicone grommets, and you got some vibration dampening O rings. Alright, so here's how much it weighs about uh, 13.965 grams, and I uh, don't know what it weighs without the heatsink. I'm sure you're wondering, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be that easy to tear off. Some of these are glued on, and if you take them off, could be damaged. Uh, if you're wondering about what version without the heatsink, you can ask Speedy directly if they have a, a version that they'll sell without the heatsink. Typically, they don't. But if you if you want one without a heatsink, you can bug them. If enough people bug them, 
um, then they might produce a non-heatsink version. So it's kind of up to you guys. You have to go there and ask them about that. Pretty sure that the non-heatsink version doesn't exist. All right, so this board here is a pass-through and a BEC for nine volt output. If you are wanting to use the all-in-one with a six volt or 6S battery, and it's actually explained here in the quick start guide right here. So if you want to read it, you can go and pause the video, but it's pretty self-explanatory. This little board here is a power expansion board, so it's explained here as well. Ext expansion board and extension module connection. Um, so that's the expansion board, and this is the uh, module for the, ex you know, if you want to move the USB-C port somewhere else. And then this basically, you can solder it to like say like a five volt on the ground and then you'll have multiple five volt on ground um, places to solder wires to so you don't have like multiple wires going to the same pad so that happens a lot actually in some of my builds so I usually try and limit to two or three but sometimes you you know if, a, if the flight controller doesn't have enough pads then you need um, something like this and so they thought about that pretty nice all right just a quick word on these uh, meteor leds they did send along uh, their package of like an LED string here, which you can put it on like a Cinewhoop, and which I think they definitely have on their B25 Cinewhoop, which I haven't reviewed yet, but you can see that it's, it's just like most other LEDs, you have your uh, ground power and your signal wire. Um, on the back side of the board here for your DJI uh, connection, if, you, if you're using for an air unit uh, that can only do 4S, if you have a 6S battery, you'd use this, as I explained earlier. But on the back side here, you have this, uh, regulator that converts the VBAT that comes from the flight controller uh, to 5 volts here. And let's just uh, get this into focus so you can see, see it. And then on the manual it does show that this is on the back side and on, on the, the connection on the flight controller it is battery voltage. So be aware that if you connect the uh, LEDs directly to battery voltage, not sure what will happen, probably they'll die most likely, because uh, there's someone designed to take 5 volts. So you will need that wired up like this if you want to use the LEDs. And I'm um, not sure if they're programmed or anything special, but apparently you can, uh, at least on the, on the B25 video, it showed that the LEDs could be programmed for like things like low voltage, return to home, etc. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're just standard um, beta flight LED programming that's in there. Uh, I don't have the B25 yet, so I'm not 100% sure that they're all that different. And of course, on my drone that I put my flight controller in, I, those, those LEDs aren't going to really work that well in here. I could probably put them on the arms, maybe cut them up, but um, yeah. not Obviously, I don't do a ton of line of sight flying. I think these LEDs are going to be great for that if you do a lot of line of sight flying, but for FPV, probably not that interesting unless you're flying kind of in darker conditions and maybe like people chasing you then you can have someone else's perspective of your drone and your LED showing in their video so if you're interfering into LEDs then you know this is uh, how you'd wire it up and I'm pretty sure that they have the uh, this a BEC in here because uh, the 5 volt regulator that's on the flight controller is probably not strong enough to power everything plus this uh, a huge string of LEDs because that power draw can be pretty big depending on how many LEDs you have connected to it. All right, so we did a quick install here on uh, there was a flight controller in here previously. It swapped it out for the uh, Speedbee, and uh, if you guys recognize the frame, put the name down in the comment. Uh, the frame is not important. It's a it's a prototype that's uh, not being manufactured. Was never manufactured, so not important. Uh, what the frame is, but uh, I'm, I basically I mean, it was a really easy swap out because I had a, um, that other flight controller had this kind of the standard DJI plug, so plugged in, unplugged the Vista from that, and then plugged it into this one, and then solder on the motor wires, solder in my Express LRS receiver and the XT30 connector, and just put some nuts on here to hold it down. That's pretty much it. This frame has a problem here with uh, the USB-C port being kind of blocked here with the standoff. Part of the reason why this uh, prototype was never manufactured. So this kind of frame, if, you're gonna, if, you, have, if you put this in a frame where your USB-C port's blocked, you can either use that extender to put the USB-C port somewhere else, which I could do in this case, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the uh, 
uh, Bluetooth antenna here and connect via the app. So let's just show you that really quick. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And we're just going to my SpeedyB app. And go ahead and add. Boom, there it is. Hit connect. It says, please set a password for you. This is new. Okay, um, interesting. I'll just hit skip. Must be a new feature. Maybe you don't, uh, it's probably to prevent other people from connecting to your flight controller and messing with your settings. Security, but yeah, it looks like, uh, let's see here. The little model's not showing up. Let's hit accelerometer calibration. There we go. And let's go to expert mode. And, yep. So you can go ahead and use the SpeedyB app. You can set all your settings in here, just like it's in Betaflight. You can even flash the firmware. One of the nice things about um, SpeedyB flight controllers is they, I think pretty much all of them have the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection. You can use your smartphone app to connect and change settings without having to wonder what to do with the USB-C port. So, very nice. Um, at this point, let's go show you some flight footage and we'll end the video.